Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our North Middlesex Municipal Council meeting. It is for June 15th. At this time, we'll call this meeting to order. Roll call, everyone is present. Uh, Councilor McClinchy is joining us on Zoom. She is online. Uh, disclose your pecuniary interest. If you have any, please forward them to the clerk. Minutes of the previous meeting. Minutes from uh, June 1st, 2022. Any business arising or errors or omissions? Anyone? Seeing none, uh, we need a mover of the minutes. Councilor Nickel, Councilor Moyer, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Uh, at this time, we are gonna start the meeting off with a delegation, but just before we do that, I wanna introduce a new employee, the head of our works department, our road works department, that's Vance Sirwinski. And uh, welcome Vance, and uh, he carries a lot of experience into this job, and we welcome you to North Middlesex. Thank you very much, Vance. At this time, uh, we do have a delegation from the Parkville County Library, and who'd like to come up to the front here? Monica, are you coming up? You no moral support coming with you, just yourself? Okay, you're with her. All right. Sure, sure, that would be great. Yes. Councilor McClinchy, you can hear us all right? Okay, I wanted to make sure you could hear this. Yeah, so Monica, we would ask you to put your microphone on, yes. So that- Good, uh, people are we on? Can... Yes. Your Worship Mayor Rock. We, the board of the Friends of the Park Hill Carnegie Library, have been invited to bring a delegation before you this evening. Our board members present tonight are Betty Gibbs, raise your hand, Ruth Cook, Bill Waters, and Ruth Feltz. We are here to ask for the utilities costs to remain the same in our new lease as it was in the last lease agreement. At an emergency meeting of our board on May 31, the following motion was made by Bill Waters, seconded by Ruth Feltz that the lease with the municipality be signed after asking the municipality if they would keep the utilities costs at 200 per month in consideration of the improvements we have already made to the building. It was carried. We cannot be compared with your other buildings, most of which are fully usable for all their programming. We have a distinct disadvantage in that regard. We have been working hard to overcome many of the challenges in saving this heritage building in order to modernize it and make it accessible. You may recall that 233 Park Hill Main Street was opened as the public library in 1915 with funds of $8,000 donated by the Andrew Carnegie Steel Company of New York. It was dedicated to be a building to provide ordinary working people with a chance to broaden their horizons by having a free public library in their community. It was dedicated to be a building for the public to use, not as a private dwelling or office space. However, it needs significant improvement to be available to everyone who wants to use the building now. First, you are aware of the fact that anyone with any kind of disability or who is pushing an infant stroller can only enter the upper floor by using the wooden ramp, which is on the rear of the building. This ramp is dangerous in the winter and also in wet weather. Second, people attending an event in the upper level need to go down the outdoor ramp or the narrow steep stairway to get to the washroom, which is another two steps down from the landing at the Mill Street door. Our mission statement reads, we will endeavor to preserve the historic building at 233 Park Hill Main Street in its original form and to offer it as a place to show, sell and teach all art forms to benefit the community of Park Hill and surrounding area. We have stuck with our plan. There are only a few Carnegie libraries in original condition left in Ontario 
and we want ours to remain as one of them. It honors our town's history and from a practical point of view, attracts tourists and visitors who have money to spend in our town. In fact, in the current fiscal year, which began October 15th to last weekend, 258 people used the basement room. That's incredible. And we have had five, 463 people enter through the front door for activities in the upstairs gallery. These people have come from far and wide. Their names are in the guest books. We did not make those numbers up. What have we done so far to modernize the building while keeping its heritage appeal? First, we have made a great difference to the upper floor. This has now become a wonderful showcase area to display and sell the artwork of local artists. It also has become a wonderful concert venue. By raising the ceiling, we have created an acoustically sound space. We have held featured artists exhibits in this room as well as a full concert series in 2018 and 2019. The 2020 series was all booked and then COVID came. We had to cancel it. We couldn't have a series in 2021 either. 2022 now has a full season running until December. We have also held book reading, a talk by a local potter, and awards ceremonies for the kids art club members at the end of their groups of classes. In addition, countless volunteer hours went into the renovation of this upstairs room, as well as professional labor, materials for the wiring, painting and floor restoration. If you haven't, well, I know your honor, you have been in and you've seen that. The downstairs level is where we hold our classes and workshops. This is down another five steps from the landing at the Mill Street door. We have patched the walls and repainted that room to make it more usable. Remember that organizing classes and events down there has been difficult when we were closed down for two and a half years. The rent and class registrations are a much needed source of income for us. We offer the downstairs room free of charge to organizations like ours who are not for profit. The Elsa Cragen District Food Bank has held its AGM there twice. Second Blessings holds its regular board meetings there also, both at no cost. We have been diligent in our fundraising efforts to cover the expenses we have incurred to improve the facilities and make them a local hub for art and artists in Park Hill and area. We have applied for and received funding from the Community Development Fund to repair the ceiling and put down new flooring in the downstairs room. To this date, we haven't made these changes so that the work could be done at the same time as the major accessibility renovations would be done to save having to do them twice. We received community funding to replace the knob and tube wiring in the building, put in a new transformer and fuse panel, all to code requirements. This funding also came from the Community Development Fund, but that wasn't enough to pay for the entire job since the electrician had to tear out all the wiring, even in the other parts of the basement for reasons of safety. We received funding from the Hydro Proceeds Fund to replace the ancient furnace and air conditioner. In addition to receiving funds, we have our own sources of income, including the following, commissions from sales of art, rent of the lower floor to artists for classes and workshops, concerts, one per month, tickets go at $20 for members, non-members, 18 for members, and $10 for those under 12. We've done sales of memberships, and to date for this year, we have 42 members. We have had lotteries, which we cannot apply to anything that the municipality bills us for, so it goes to other expenses. And finally, various fundraisers. Here is a reminder of our history with the building. In 2016, we began discussions with the North Middlesex staff about how we could save the building from the wrecking ball 
and turn it into a center for arts and culture in our community. It had been vacated by the public library in 2014. In 2016, we officially formed our not-for-profit corporation, drew up the bylaws, and we've held regular monthly meetings and an annual general meeting every year in November. In 2017, we signed our first lease agreement with the municipality. Accessibility requirements and funding progress to date. In 2017, we were told the building would need to be accessible by 2023. That is now being postponed to 2025 by the government. We know that our programs are not efficiently reaching the older people with mobility difficulties or the younger people wanting to bring their babies in strollers inside. We put a lot of effort into trying to receive funding for such a project, even though our lease with the municipality stated that North Middlesex could possibly sell the building and ask us to va vacate on four months notice. We raised enough funds to pay the architect, Gail Lamb, for her work in drawing up the plans. We have also paid Calidus Engineering for drawing up all the required drawings pertaining to the alterations. The total bill for both of them was in excess of $11,000. You have these diagrams in your possession here in the building. With various fundraising ideas, donations from the public, one substantial grant from a family foundation and a GoFundMe account, we now have 19,320.94 on hand. So totally we have raised $30,370.94 for, for the renovation so far. I estimate this to be about 10% of the total renovation cost, which will now be around 300,000. Where do we stand now? The two and one half years of COVID shutdown has severely impacted our ability to balance the books. We very much appreciate the three months grace you gave us on the utilities in 2021. Our fixed monthly expenses, which include utilities, insurance, internet, et cetera, have been approximately 400 a month. With your proposal on the new lease, they will be about 600 a month, an increase of approximately $200. There are other monthly expenses that are variable, such as communications, advertising, et cetera. Our treasurer has drawn up a draft operating budget, which includes the old figures for the utilities and an improvement to our website on the expenses side. Our projected budgeted income for the same period based on this past year's figures show a shortfall of $120 a month. If the municipality will hold our utilities at the 2017 figure, we should be able to balance our books each month with some concerted effort. Incidentally, no salaries have been paid except for a summer student on the Canada Summer Jobs Grant. All positions are filled by volunteers. We have seven board members, 15 volunteers who work at the desk upstairs, and five others who have helped out in various ways. Let me be clear, our community of Park Hill needs this kind of cultural center and is obviously willing to support it with their money, time, effort, and attendance. The old library is the perfect place to have such a center with its historical value and location on the main street. Our new residents have been used to this kind of facility in the cities they have left. We will continue to offer it to them. Thank you again for your invitation tonight. We hope you will reconsider the counter proposal we have put before council and consider to and continue to support in any way you can our efforts to put this building to good community use for years to come. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Brandon, would, do you wanna have, make some comments here before I open it up to the council for questions to you? That's, you have anything you wanna add to that right now? Okay, thank you. I'm, so I'm gonna turn it over to council for questions. 
comments, questions? Who'd like to start? Deputy Mayor Carnell. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Monica. That was very well done. I appreciate uh, hearing all the information that you brought forth. We truly do. One of the questions I have for you, you talked a little bit about your revenue stream. What type of revenue stream do you bring in on an annual basis? What amount? Well, it depends. We, mm -hmm. we, we're, we get commission on our sales mm -hmm. and that is variable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can sell a big piece of art and mm -hmm. we get a percentage. Um, our concerts bring in quite a bit, but we've been out of concerts for mm -hmm. two, three years. Um, the rent of the lower level is not high, but we hope to increase that. Um, we hope to add more lotteries. I just want to say that we have spent an awful lot of time writing grants for this um, accessibility. And we should have probably put our time into raising funds for the operating. Okay. So when you talked about your financials there previously, you did indicate that your treasurer had a projected yes. uh, revenue stream. What amount would that be? Okay. Um, this is just without board approval. Sure. She's expecting $15,280 for the coming year. Okay. Thank you. The other question I have is in relation to accessibility. Um, the Watford Library is also a Carnegie Library. I don't know if you had the opportunity yes, to be I've there. Been there. And I've been there as well, but I cannot recall if it has accessibility like an elevator at the back. Do, do you know? I don't know. I, it seems to me it doesn't have as many steps as ours does. It does have some, and, and I know there's an addition on the back, but I can't recall if there's a, an elevator there. You see, we have not, we don't wish to alter the building at all. We, right. I said this to you five years ago. We wanted to keep it the way it is in its historic value. So having said that, if there's a lift system installed, where would it be at the Mill Street entrance or? Oh no, we have the diagrams and you have them here. Okay, I haven't seen They're it. internal and it's a strictly a lift. It's a, a, a lift big enough for a wheelchair, a person in the wheelchair and a person with them. Okay. And okay. it's a three stop lift. And the cost of that estimated is? The cost of the lift itself is not, not very high in the total scheme of things, about 35,000. Okay but it's tearing the floor out, bolstering the, the, the floor and maintaining the, the, the structure of the building. And that is going to occupy a big spot in the one side of the building. And then there's the washroom issue, mm -hmm. which we were going to put on the other side of the building, even though the plumbing and sewage is on the front of the building right mm -hmm. now. But mm -hmm. that's where the lift is going to go. And the lift can't go anywhere else. The big problem is that steep stairway down the middle. Yes. And that cannot be taken out because it will make the building unstructurally sound. I understand. Okay. And the architect went through that a lot. And that's why we've had a big bill from her. Okay. Thank you, Monica. Okay. All right. Who's, who wanted, Councillor Moyer? You, you mentioned grants, you, you had no success with those. We've had grants. no grants with provincial and federal funding in this last year. It has been a real trial to me personally to be rejected four times. And part of it was because the grants that were open were not for bricks and mortar. They were for rehabilitation after COVID, for getting your programs started which in hindsight, probably we should have done and forgotten about fixing up your building. But because we wanted to do a good job with that, mm -hmm. we, we tried on that. And we tried to turn the wordage around so that it like, for example, there was one, and I think Brandon applied for it, a recreation grant. Well, we worded that as recreation. It didn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Brandon, Nelson. maybe you can add, oh. you know that you've exhausted most of the- uh, We have, but there are time. others coming up. There's one coming up in August, but I think uh, given what I've told you tonight, we need to spend more, more effort on our own operating line and 
the, the mayor and I have had a discussion of some other way of doing funding for the building, but that isn't really on the topic tonight. I was going to add it to my 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 little thing here, but I took it out. I thought my board should discuss that first, but right. yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, in just a minute, uh, Councillor McClinchy, would you like to speak on this now? Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear? Can you hear me? I just want I just want to recognize all the hard work, the efforts, the long nights, the tears that have been put into this building to make it possible. Um, I have worked along with Monica, and I, I share her her concerns as well as the board. Um, I'm hoping that as a council that we can um, somehow somehow or other accommodate them uh, at this time because I do understand that everybody did suffer through the COVID. As Monica had said, that this building is a unique building. The other buildings are used all the time. So uh, it's more, it's difficult, um, you know, to keep this up and running. And I'm not sure where the, uh, the uh, board members are going on this. Uh, so if they're, go if they, they're gonna, if they wanna extend the lease, till the end of the year, Monica, was my correct in hearing that? Can you hear me? Yes, yep. I can. Yep, we hear can you, I right? answer her? Yes, yeah. go yeah, ahead. We do want to extend the lease, but we would like it under those financial terms of the previous one. And we, yeah. we go happily for another five years if you would let us. But somebody's got to do something about the accessibility because that's two years from, three years from now. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mark Nelson and then Councillor Keogh. Thank you, Mary Rob. Monica, as you were speaking there, I, I, the thought occurred to me, and I'll ask the question. Um, given that it's a heritage building, is there any funding through a heritage foundation that would assist in the accessibility issues? Any I grants? I think that Jonathan and I looked at that five years ago, and I've also discussed it with Doreen because she's very interested in the historical aspect. And there was one little glitch on it not being officially a historical <coughs> building. Uh, through, your, through your worship uh, to uh, the deputy mayor. So in investigation of the building, the municipality does not hold a local heritage designation. There is an overlining of, uh, system in the provincial landscape, but we haven't done a title search to determine if it is a historically significant building. We would probably know that they would inform us and, and we would have that in the property file. We do not. I'm not denying it doesn't have historical significance. It's just that it's not classified in a registry, whether it be locally or provincially to be, in, it be able to go for those grants. Sometimes you can apply for those grants and just throw caution to the wind to see if it will apply because the Carnegie name holds weight. But in this instance, it's not a, her a historical building or a heritage, significantly heritage building in terms of being registered in, a, 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 somewhere in the province or locally. Would it be worthwhile to contact or to explore uh, those opportunities or any opportunities with Monty McNaughton's office? Um, I don't believe Monty's office would be the one to look into that. I think it's the Ministry of uh, Cultural Culture, Tourism. I had this the other day, <laughs> and then with that one, uh, they're the ones that deem it. They hold the repository in terms of a provincial or a local one and the provincial one at that same level. We can certainly reach out to them. Um, but we might be subject to, you know, fees in terms of them deciphering or looking into it, but we can certainly do that. Well, and that's why I thought Monty's office, because maybe you could uh, advocate on our behalf. That's all I was asking. Okay. okay. Councillor Keel. Thank you, Mayor Rob. Uh, Monica, in your presentation, you had mentioned that um, you have a trust fund or a family yes. fund that um, is contributing. Um, are they, would they also be committed to uh, continued funding for the next five years as well? Well, I don't believe so. It, it was a one-time ask. Okay. And this is a foundation from London, and they are very interested in the arts. Okay. If you go to anything, uh, any kind of musical event in London, they are usually on the program. They give an awful lot of money to the arts, and we ap appeal to them. And they gave us a substantial donation, which is sitting there ready for whenever this gets going again uh, as a fundraiser, we've got that uh, 17 or however many thousand I said 
sitting there right now. We've already spent the professional fees. We don't owe any money. It's uh, ready to go. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Moyer. Yes, and this might be for Jonathan as well. With the heritage uh, designation, that could make it more difficult to do renovations. And uh, so you, you need to be a little bit careful on whether we, whether you go down that, that avenue or not. Through the uh, through the worship to uh, Councillor Moyer, that is correct. Heritage, uh, although I know you guys are building and designing to keep the the integrity of the building there, it does trigger different building code aspects. Yeah, uh, and it, and you know it, sometimes they go as far as you can't touch the windows outside, although the windows might be single pane and a hundred years old and be old, you know, nineteen eighties framing. It's still they they go that far. They tell you. It, not to touch a door or to, these are the things that you have to do go, to go through. So that message is received that we might be opening Pandora's box as it would be through the renovations. Other questions? Councilor Nickel? So when you're looking at making the building accessible, as I understand it, we are responsible for the outside and you would be responsible for the inside. Is that correct? More or less, yes. Yes. More or less. <laughs> well, I've done some repairs outside just in the last month because I got tired of the water draining in the wrong places. So my husband and I got out there and we just did it. So do you have an estimate on the cost that it would cost to make it accessible for your washrooms, the downstairs area? Yes, because we have are... now a 300000 That's cost. your 300000 It went up 30% according to the builder whose uh, tender we liked when we put it out to tender before COVID. And I asked him because we were going to apply for more grants. And I said, what's the number I'm going to put in now? He said, add 30%. Okay, so that is after COVID prices. Yes, okay. and that included the professional fees, which we've already paid. So, you know, it, it, there's enough there for contingencies. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions from council? Any other questions? Uh, okay, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Oh, so thank you. And, and it just triggers something as the Councilor Nickel was talking here, and, and you talked about the, the lift itself being relatively inexpensive, but yes. the cost was more going to be in the labor aspect of it, of all the work that needed to be done. And the structural preparation. Right. Yeah. So, so my thought is, is, as we're going through this process, are there any local contractors that may consider volunteering some of their expertise in that process? Well, it's it's all wrapped up into one bundle mm -hmm. we looked at on the advice of one of the board members we looked at splitting off the washroom and i asked about that and that the contractor that we we like said no he wanted to do it all at once because it was one one package um i my advice to the municipality would be don't piecemeal it, get it all done together. We've got the drawings, we've paid $8,000, mm -hmm. whatever I told you. Yeah. Um, uh, we raised that money. Uh, no, sorry, we paid $11,050 plus HST for what we've had done so far. And we raised that money. And then over and above, we have raised some more. So altogether, we've raised over 30000 Right. And I think that's pretty good, given that we didn't get any government grants. Yes, it is. Um, and it's just all of us that are working like crazy because we're all volunteers. And we want what's best for the building and for our purpose here. We're, we're, we're pretty passionate about the fact that we need some artistic presence in this area. I know that Else Craig has some, um, but ours to be offered in a heritage building, um, it's an all-in-one, it's a concert hall, it's a teaching facility, it's a show place. It, it's really a wonderful place to, to have art and culture in North Middlesex. Thank you. So, did you have another question? Councillor Nickel. Well, I agree, it's a, it's a wonderful place and it serves its purpose. Is there, if, and I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but if we cannot come to terms on that lease change that you're looking for, is there any other place that you could have similar venues 
within the area? I considered that when I first heard that, that you didn't want to change the lease to our, our, our wishes. I thought of all different places we might use and our board discussed it. And we decided that we didn't want to piecemeal it, you know, have art in one building, have concerts in another building, have something else somewhere else when we've got it all together. And it's such a wonderful location right on the main street. And you won't believe where the people have come from. Last Friday, somebody came from Calgary. People came from Watford. Every week there's somebody that comes from somewhere else and they see our door open and they come in and they say, wow. And we tell them the history of the place and we're very proud of it. Um, maybe they don't buy anything. Maybe it doesn't translate into dollars, but that's what art is, isn't it? it art doesn't really make a lot of money. You've heard of the starving artist. You know, it, art is not a, a lucrative thing to be in. We just want to be breaking even. Okay. Any other questions from council? Any other questions? Councillor McClinchy, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, but I would I would uh, want to make a motion that we are we into that yet. That we would not change the lease and leave it as it is, the the rent. So or maybe I should do it a different wording, but I support them and still letting them pay that what they're paying right now. So, okay, just before that motion, if I can, Doreen, because we'll we'll come back to it. Right. Uh, uh, I was wondering, it's just if we, what would you think of waiting until October, like leaving it as existing, the lease as existing without the new lease until you have an annual meeting in October? Correct. The annual meeting will be in November. November. Yes. And, okay. Until the annual meeting to leave the lease, the old lease in place until that time, give a season here to see how, how everything happens without COVID hopefully, and to see how things are at that time and revisit here in the fall and give us, um, this isn't a decision that has to be made in one day. No, and except that our lease expires at the end of this month. But what I'm saying is if we extend the old lease until okay. that time, that don't, be... don't touch the lease until that time. Councilor McClinchy, what would you think of that idea? Well, yes, I, I fully agree. Okay. I fully agree with that. So, so and that's just, a, it's just a, what would council think of that? And we would need it in a motion. But um, I guess I would ask you, what do you think of that? At least then there's time to uh, consider and to look I, at how the season goes. I think that's fine. What do we use it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, please come to the microphone just because uh, uh, people, Doreen can't hear you on Zoom otherwise. I'm Ruth Cook. I didn't think you could see me back there. Um, Monica has done an amazing job telling you about the gallery and its numbers. But one one little excerpt that has not been there is what it has done for the children in our community. We have had children's programs and we have through that, through the generosity of people been able to actually cover the fee for two children who desperately needed a form of art and acceptance where they were not getting it in their community or in their school. The children's program that we offer is one that builds character as well as um, opens intelligence to look at things that they never saw before. And we have been approved through the Canada Summer Jobs Program to have two students this year, one to help manage the gallery upstairs and another to help manage programming downstairs, which will include children's summer camps. If we don't have our lease, we can't even hire those students or offer a summer camp art program for various levels of children. And, and Ruth, that's what I was meaning if we left the lease to the existing lease, 
until the annual meeting, you have a season to see how, without COVID, to see how things go? I, I understand that and I appreciate it greatly. Okay. I also want to let you know that this is an ongoing thing throughout okay. the school year as well as the summer. Okay. So please keep that in mind that if we, if we can't raise enough funds for us to keep going, and offer children the opportunity for something like this who are behaviorally needy children, then they're going to be out on the streets again. So could I ask you, Ruth, then say that you you don't have the building after at the end of the year, would you still consider doing those classes or if we provided, if the municipality was able to provide us not another space to still do those things, would you continue doing those things? And I know you put your heart and soul into it. I know that, Ruth. I, I do. And but that's why I'm asking: if if it wasn't the Carnegie Library, would you do them somewhere else? I would like to see it as a whole package. If we mm -hmm. are somewhere else, it okay. Would, it, because because it is arts and culture, and it's the cultural aspect that comes together with the arts that that you know, it's um, really raising awareness in our community. I attended a conference in the fall, um, in the spring for uh, tourism, Ontario tourism. And the whole aspect of having arts and culture together was very high on their priority list in how, some of the things that they were leading us, teaching us. Um, I think if we, my heart is with the children always, but adults as well, but if we start breaking it up, I think the arts and the culture will be lost within our community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's what thank I you. Thanks. Thank right. you. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Canellis. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Ruth, for bringing that to our attention, the art program with the youth that you talked about. I'm very passionate about that myself. I've worked with troubled youth for a good number of years. And, and they do have difficulty expressing themselves, but many of them are very, very artistic. And it's an excellent form for them to express themselves. So I appreciate that contribution that you made. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Yep, thank you. Um, so there's a suggestion here of leaving that lease at this time, leaving it until uh, the, November, the end of November. We need a motion to that effect. I will make that a motion. Okay. Made by Councilor McClinchy and seconded by Deputy Mayor Canellis. In favor of that motion, carried. So we'll we'll revisit this as the as the uh, summer and as the fall goes on. All right. See if we can find solutions. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll move on now to department reports. And the first one is uh, from our clerk, and it is about the municipal election accessibility plan. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. As part of the Municipal Elections Act, there is a requirement that an accessibility plan be prepared and posted. So this report addresses that requirement under the Municipal Elections Act. We do have a recommended motion that the report entitled 2022 Municipal Election Accessibility Plan be received and that the 2022 Municipal Election Accessibility Plan document be subject to amendment at any time as deemed necessary and appropriate by the clerk of the municipality of North Middlesex without further direction from council and that where amendment to the 2022 Municipal Election Accessibility Plan document occurs, such amendment be noted in the 2022 Municipal Election Accessibility Plan document, and the document shall be made available to the public before voting day in a regular election. Questions from council on that? I think it's pretty straightforward in the, in the reports there. We need a mover on that. Councillor Keel, second by Councillor Nickel. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Our next one is a report from the CAO on the Lake Huron and Elgin water uh, area water supply system, Strathroy pipeline agreement. Thank you. Uh, through worship to members of council, 
Uh, this report is for the recommendation that council directs staff to enter into a debt repayment agreement with the Lake Huron Elgin area water supply system via the city of London in the amount of 1.639, or stop, say that again, $1,639,330.67 in the form of a 10 year fixed agreement. A couple of details to highlight. The fixed term for this agreement it has been negotiated at 2.69% over the course of the 10 years. There would be two payments per year, one in July, and one at the end of December. The uh, total amount, including the interest, would amount to $1,855,669.59. As you will recall in some of the background information, this pipeline or this arrangement came in around 2007. But an inadvertent error for billing uh, occurred where Strathroy was given our portion of the share of the project. And we're doing some house cleaning in terms of these takeoffs that were provided for our proportionate share of the project that is known as the Strathroy line. Uh, there are three takeoffs that were included as part of the project and two are currently being used right now. And you have the background agreement from 2007, some of the baseline draft agreement that we're considering tonight and the schedule repayment attached thereof. That being said, I'll open the floor for any comments or questions. Questions from council? I think we're all aware of this. We've talked about this and uh, I wanna thank Jonathan and, and staff for coming to an agreement on this along with uh, Andrew Henry, I believe as we had dealt with. Uh, to get this to fruition so we can get this looked at. I, I on, should, on an I, would, term. I would be remiss to mention that this was presented at the June 2nd Lake Huron board meeting and they're acceptable to the terms as well. So we're the last one to go to put it in place for the first payment in July. So we do need a motion to pay that. Councillor Moyer, seconded by Councillor Hemming. All in favor, carried. Thank you. Uh, passing of accounts. Who's doing that? Jonathan, are you? Uh, through your worship, our treasurer is somewhere maybe watching this right now on a boat in Alaska, but probably not. Um, so for the, tonight's consideration is the bills and accounts and the recommendation before you is that council receive and accept the following accounts payable reports as information. Uh, with that being said, I'll open the floor to any questions. Questions on the accounts? Deputy Mayor Ellison. I was waiting to see if anyone else had a question. I didn't even bother. I, didn't even bother. I just asked you. In going through this, I did email Estelle earlier today, and of course it bounced back. She's away, and I hope she's enjoying herself. Uh, but my question is on the Trickety at All Tax Team Incorporated taxation registration fees. I see a number of them. What is that for? Um, I, and I'm just going off the recollection of the name. That is the agency that will be going, uh, we have to go a step further in our tax rears in terms of uh, people who aren't paying their taxes. And part of the uh, system that the province has set up is that we have to peel off to a third party company and that's what that invoice is for, I believe. But I can look into it further if I'm incorrect. Uh, I, I assume that's what it was and I appreciate your answer, thank you. I have concerned that there's so many of them. We, COVID proved a different, time for some of those decision trees and we opted to wait until the end for some of this uh and we're just getting back into the motion and the unfortunate issue is that once you start and it's about a two-year process you can't stop unless you go all the way back to the very beginning of the notice so we just have to keep up with the momentum any other questions for the councillor keel i do thank you mayor uh, jonathan while looking through this today uh, later today I see we have a, uh, an invoice for radio tower for the new fire hall from MRC systems. Um, these little incidentals, were they not in our initial bid to put that building up or will we be expecting more of these? There are, through your worship to the counselor, there are, there's the difference between an incidental and then there's the cash allowance being exercised. Okay. So I don't know if this instance, this what cash allowance, I'm getting a nod from, yeah. It's cash allowance part of it, so they assign as part of the technology and I think the whole thing is 250,000. They basically submit it from to us and we pay it that, that chunk of money is just from cash allowance. Now, what is part of Okay, so this is not an extra. This is it was incorporated into the budget, and they're just exercising the cash Very allowance. Good. Okay. Okay. 
itself. Oh, okay. And will we be seeing um, this type of stuff for the EMS portion as well? Um, there are certain EMS that can come security and stuff like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the accounts? Seeing no other questions, we need a motion on the report. Councilor Nickel, second by Councilor McClinchy. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Lake Huron primary water supply. I think 1.6 million is enough to talk about there. Uh, ABCA, anything you want to add to that? Deputy yes. Mayor? Yes, I do. Uh, as uh, yourself and I spoke about yesterday, uh, Mayor Rapp, uh, we are both familiar with it, but perhaps the rest of the council is not, that uh, the Osama Bayfield actually has a weighted vote system, which was something I just discovered recently. And it's uh, assigned up uh, according to your apportionment, uh, which North Middlesex, I believe, is about 11%, but it only applies to the budget aspect of it. But that was news to me, and I, and I discussed with Mayor Rob yesterday. He was familiar with that before. Also, tomorrow uh, at our board meeting, we will be discussing the memorandum of understanding, and I uh, would uh, refer to perhaps Jonathan there when he has a chance to review it. There's a number of issues that are related to policy and planning that concerns me and in how involved they would be with county and municipal strategic plans. So these are questions that I intend to ask tomorrow because my feeling is, and, and I would think that, uh, that the conservation authority should be regulated to specific areas of policy and planning in regulated areas only. I'll certainly investigate that and share any blaring gaps uh, with the group in the, in the future. Do you have access to the agenda? I do. I, I'll look, review it tonight and early tomorrow morning um, or, or provide an update report thereafter because it sounds like it's going to influence our procedurals. So I would warrant it sounds like a report back to council so that we understand what happens in our strategic plan and how we're supposed to engage them. Okay, but keeping in mind the, the right to disconnect, don't start too early or too late. Appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, anything, any questions for Deputy Mayor on it? No, seeing none. Uh, blue water recycling, anything, Councilor McClinchy? No. Uh, economic development, uh, local school advisory. I think you have a meeting tomorrow night, right? We have a meeting tomorrow night for uh, the local school advisory. Mayor Rob, I have a comment that I'd like to make, if I may. I would like to share with members of council, given all the controversy about the Rural Education Task Force, and I think many of you saw it on the news, I have here a thank you letter and appreciation from the board chair for my participation and contributions to that task force over the past two years, which I found rather ironic given how it all turned out. But I thought I'd share that with council. That's because you didn't show up at their doorstep for that meeting. That's why they're thanking you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Recreation committee, anything? Monday? Okay, wonderful. Uh, policy review. Uh, we haven't anything right now. I did ask um, uh, Donna about, there's a couple of policies that I'd like to see the committee look at that we have now to see if they're still valid or if we need to. So, uh, fire committee? I uh, know nothing at this time. The cement's going in. Uh, cement is going in. Uh, just on the, on the fire, if I may, uh, I went in to have a look at the new Monday night, unit. Monday. I believe it was Monday. Yes. Uh, the new rescue truck rail straight came in finally, and it fits. And I, I understand that it was well received by the, the firefighters from Elsa Craig, that they were quite happy with the piece of equipment. I understand that, yes. It's uh, it's quite an upgrade from the old uh, red truck. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Brandon, uh, in, as we're talking about the fire committee here, uh, I have some concerns about the lack of progress in the forming aspect of it over across the road. And I sent an email to uh, Jonathan Lappin this morning and he was going to look into it, but it seems that they're not progressing very quickly there, giving their expertise. So through the mayor to the deputy mayor, they are on pro in progress and they're on their expected progress, they're expected by next Wednesday to begin backfilling. Um, our structural steel, we're hoping to have late July, early August. Um, and then from there, or I guess actually today we found out that it'd probably be August um, steelway kind of 
holds everyone to their windows, not necessarily when you want it. Um, but yeah, in terms of progress, they are looking like they're somewhat slow, but they're trying to time it so that when that steel is going to arrive, that they can basically ramp right up. And then when the steel comes in, it's moving forward. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brennan. Um, Aqua, anything on that? Uh, we did have our quarterly meeting. Uh, some interesting discussion about uh, municipal financing and asset management, but I'll reserve that until I have minutes and uh, share it with council a little bit more wholesomely. Okay. Uh, correspondence. We have a uh, North Middlesex Canada Day Committee requesting for funding support for the Canada Day fireworks. Brandon, do you want to speak to this a little bit? I, I will. Um, so, Mayor Rott, members of council, in the past, the Canada Day fireworks have always been set off by our Firefighter Association. Um, in the past, prior, the last two or three years, there have been a couple incidents with fireworks. I know one of the firemen actually got hit in the chest with one before it went off. Um, the bunker gear suppressed it well. Um, in speaking with the fire chief in terms of the liability we take on setting them off ourselves, if one ever went into the crowd and hit somebody, we're not trained pyrotechnics to set those off. Um, so in speaking with the chief and the firefighter association, we thought it best to leave it to a professional, which we uh, mentioned to the candidate committee. They were in agreement with this year. They've secured a professional through the community development fund, they thought they had secured funding twice when in fact it was just a rollover. Um, so what they're requesting is to have $2,500 pulled from the Canada Day Reserve and put it into the Canada Day spending account just to account for the difference. Okay, so we do have a recommended motion on that, that council direct staff to transfer $2,500 from the Canada Day Reserve account to the Canada Day Committee Revenue Account. Move back. Moved by Councillor Hemming. Oh, seconded by Councillor McClinchy. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Uh, our next uh, correspondence District uh, Municipality of Muskoka Annual Emergency Exercise Exemption. Receive and file. City of Cambridge, Ontario must build it right the first time. Receive and file. City of Kitchener, energy performance tiers and timelines, receive and file. Niagara region and town of Fort Erie, support for Russian sanctions, receive and file. I don't wanna be put on the mayor's list of the hit list from the Russians, you know. <laughs> Isn't that what they're advertising now? Um, town of Blue Mountain, resolution for inclusion of mailing addresses of voters on voters list. Receive and file. Roadside habitat project request permission to maintain frontage without cutting or springs for the five year period. Uh, and did everyone see that? Okay. You would move you would move the request. Seconded by Councillor Nickel. Any discussion on that? In favor. It is carried. Uh, Town of F Fort Erie, resolution regarding bidding on rental units and residential sales, receive and file. Town of Fort Erie, resolution regarding taxation of foreign owned properties, receive and file. Councillor Keogh. I would, uh, I'd like to support that. Okay, you make a motion, to, make support. A motion to support that. Do we have a seconder? Deputy Mayor, in favor. Opposed? It's carried. Okay, other and urgent business. I have something, Mayor Ryan. Go ahead. I uh, just want to share with Brandon that I received a number of correspondences today complimenting the rec department and, and uh, on the maintenance of the ballparks. They were very impressed. Everything worked well. The, today was the uh, school ball tournament. Well, they did complain about the heat, but they said the parks were just in, in, in great shape. Congratulations. Uh, did you see the one team was walking around with the plastic helmets with the two drinks and the straws? <laughs> um, anyways, it's, it's a good event. 
a great event. It was a very hot day for them, but it was, it's a great event. Uh, I, I have a couple of other items on other business before I turn it over to others. Um, there's a free, the, YM, the YMCA is putting on a free movie night on Friday night at eight o'clock. Uh, and it's at the uh, Coronation Park. I had to think for a second. At Coronation Park, it's at eight o'clock and the movie starts at nine sharp. And they're saying, bring a chair or a blanket, like bring your own seating, whatever you want. And what movie are they playing, Brad? Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's on that's on Friday, and it's a free movie. It you know it's nice. Uh, it's great to get that opportunity, and want to thank the Y for joining in with us on that. Um, I did have another one, and that was oh, I just uh, as a notice to people, I got a I got a and text from Hydro One just saying with the storm warnings that are out, they're saying that they're ready, but for people to be, because there is heavy storms expected. So they're just saying that they're ramping up to be ready for it. Uh, I do have one other item. That was the food drive is June 28th at seven o'clock. All right. I think it's in Park Hill and Elsa Cray, I believe. It's, it's both and Naren. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other business? Councilor Hemming. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, I spoke to you earlier this week about uh, the dust control. Okay, and maybe I should have brought this up before, but um, I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can um, maybe look into maybe spending more time and money at some point administering more dust control, even if it's just spots in front of houses, because uh, the dust tends to affect the livestock on some of these farms, so, and the, it, especially if it's a feathered flock, it requires a lot of grief. Through the worship to uh, Councillor Hemming, we could certainly look at that through the budget time and in, even in consideration of the band of which our, our purchase and procurement would be this year. Um, in speaking to our new public works manager uh, about dust control and maintenance gravel, he had an interesting interpretation that maybe we should be putting this on social media and the maps provided so people understand where it's going and when it's coming. Uh, so we'll be shaping that as well for next year as, uh, for people for, to consider and have access to. And we find that informing people when they know it's going to happen goes a long way. They just want to know what's happening. Uh, so we'll be looking into changing that program in the future as well. Yeah, I think that would go a, a long way for the communication between. Okay, good. Thank you. Councilor Keel. Thank you, Mayor. I too have a, uh, received a, a phone call uh, with regards to um, excessive dust. Um, the resident is actually questioning the uh, consistency um, or the quality of gravel. Uh, they're claiming that it may have a bit more clay in it than what we need. And uh, it is quite dusty when it is dried out. So anyhow, um, their concern is, is the, le the quality of gravel being checked before these hoppers are opening up and spreading down the road. I can certainly look into that and make sure it's being done. Appreciate that. Deputy Mayor and then Councilor Moyer. Thank you. Uh, I also have a question, and I don't know if I should direct it to yourself, Jonathan, or Jonathan Lapman, but I wanted to follow up with the children crossing at the daycare center on Park Hill Drive. I see the signs not there yet. The signs have been ordered. Okay. Um, I know that, and I know that they're, I don't know when they're scheduled to go in, but I know that the county is informed and everybody's in the same page. So, Councilor Moyer. Yeah, he opened up some. Can of worms with the dust control. I had some calls as well and some texts. Um, I talked to Jonathan on it, and, and he had Vance um, call me and uh, took care of things right away. The uh, residents along the road seemed to be pleased once once the uh, once work was done. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, just a comment I'd make. Uh, remember, I mentioned about uh, our uh, young lady who is on the under eighteen. Hockey team. I don't know if anybody saw it on Monday night, but she scored the game-winning goal uh, against the U.S. in the final. That was that was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and Amos. Amos, yes. No. They've never been to Brinsley if they call them Amos. Have they? But anyway, so congratulations to to her again as well. But uh, so, any other business at this time? Seeing none, you have the deferred items in front of you. Communications. I can't recall anything of significance, Mira. No, I think I think there will be uh, when the next newsletter comes out. Unfortunately, there was uh, the meeting was just yesterday. 
there hasn't been a meeting just because of the way the calendar worked out this month. Uh, the, the county official plan is is on the agenda and it's it's a good article. I mean, there's some really good things happening there and I would encourage anyone to, uh, to have a look at it. They've addressed many issues on it, like uh, migrant housing, you know, uh, to, to make that a better process and things like that. So there's a lot of things on it. So uh, if you get the opportunity, but otherwise I think uh, we'll wait for the newsletter to come out. Yeah, there wasn't anything of significance our way. Uh, reading of the bylaws. I don't think you have to read them all out. Everybody's got them in front of them, correct? Yeah, I uh, thank you, Your Worship. I will make a note of one of the bylaws that has been pulled as a result of action tonight, uh, and that's the um, uh, the bylaw number 069, agreement between North Middlesex and the Friends of the Park Hill Carnegie Library. That bylaw would have implemented the agreement that was decided at the last council meeting, but of course that's not occurring now. So uh, going through, uh, we do have a recommended motion that bylaws 058 to 068 and 070 through 075 be read a first and second time. Need a mover. Councillor McClinchy, Councillor Keogh, all in favor? Carried. And the second resolution that bylaws 058 to 068 and 070 through 075 be read a third and final time. Moved by Councillor Nickel, Councillor Moyer, all in favor? Carried. Thanks, Richard. Uh, at this time, we do are looking for a motion to go into closed session. And the reason for the closed session is labor relations or employee negotiations, uh, QP negotiation. We need a mover to go into closed. Councillor Keogh, Councillor Hemming, all in favor? Carried. All right, we'll just get a minute.